Good morning and welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Montgomery online worship for April 5, 2020. No matter what your belief, your background, no matter where you are or what you're doing, we welcome you and glad to have you with us this morning. I would like to invite you into this hour of worship this morning with these words from the Reverend Gretchen Haley of Foothills Unitarian. Life comes for us in a thousand different ways, undoes plans and upends traditions, knocks down the doors of our defense in a moment Every expectation releases like the in and out of breath. Life is urgent and also unbearably slow and does not take well to our fantasies of control. We gather here to practice surrendering to the waves of grace and grief in song, in silence, in story, we come to remember the possibility of a larger call that we might offer our gifts with a surprising generosity, that we might release ourselves from the needing to know, that we might simply be present to this beauty, these partners, this hope that we make together. Come, let us worship together. I invite all those who will to join me in speaking aloud the covenant of our congregation. We, the members and friends of the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Montgomery, promise to serve our community with open minds, willing hearts, and helping hands as we respect one another, honoring that our perceptions may differ value our differences, working to better understand them in conflict, give joyfully of ourselves, being in harmony with our capabilities, and embrace our connections with each other, nature, 
the global community, and the great mystery of life. Now, we're going to hear from our coordinator of religious education, Roger Burdett. Hey, I've been reading a book for quite a while called Loser, Why Fit In When You Can Stand Out by Jerry Spinelli. And the last chapter was the first time that our protagonist, Donald Zinkoff, was called Loser for the first time. He's in the fifth grade now. We have watched him grow from the first grade up to where he is now. He's becoming much more aware of what people think, but he's still a pretty happy-go-lucky guy. Zinkoff often rides to Half Tank Hill. Half Tank Hill is in the park, and the best part of it is a grassy, evilly steep slope that commands, come down me. And they do. Kids from all over town in all seasons of the year sled down, run down, roll down, tumble down, bicycle down, tricycle down, rollerblade down, skateboard down, trash can lid down. Well, early in his life, when Zinkoff raced cars along the sidewalk, he had believed that he was the fastest kid in the world. And now that he knows this to be untrue, Half Tank Hill has become all the more appealing to him. Halfway down the hill, he can feel himself losing control. His legs cannot keep up with his speed. He feels as if he's coming apart. He's running out of himself. He's leaving himself behind. Sometimes he bikes it. He aims the front tire over the grassy crest, and down he goes. And for those few seconds, nothing can convince him that he is not the fastest thing in the universe. And even though he's too big now to yell, Yahoo, every time, he yells it anyway, Yahoo! And he rediscovers every time that no one is slow on Half Tank Hill, and there are no clocks. Sometimes he doesn't want to ride anywhere in particular. Sometimes he doesn't want to ride fast. Sometimes he just wants to ride. And that's when he aims clinker one for the alleys where cats and little kids roam, but no cars. And he rides, he just rides, and that's good enough. And so Zinkoff's life in fifth grade is filled with things new and interesting and good, good enough. And until the day of the test that is not a test, it never occurs to him that something has been missing. So that gets us to chapter 18. It's called Best Friend. We'll check that out next time. Have a great week. Our congregation practices a form of spiritual connection or communal prayer in which we lift up and release the things that we carry with us during the days between the moments we are together. In these days, there are so many things that we carry, it becomes desperately hard to release them. So this moment is all the more important as we are together apart. I would like to invite you into this time again with the words from the Reverend Gretchen Haley. There is enough space between us to hold all that you are carrying, all you've been waking, wondering, worrying, or wearing out with confusion or attempts to control, trying to find some sense of normal. All of your irritability, your curiosity, your fragile sobriety, your numb disbelief, your loneliness, your exhaustion, your daily question allergies or the virus, and your joy. We can hold that too. We can hold all of it here for this time and bless it. Here we will call each other just as we are, beloved. Here 
in this far apart space that is also close in, so much remains uncertain with each passing breath. The ground is shifting. All we can say for sure is we are caught in this tangled blessing of life, of grief and gratitude together, like always, except more. With all the forces of spring and the spinning of the earth, we are turning and becoming and beginning again, offering ourselves like the crocus flower, breaking through with a wild beauty, ready for whatever comes next. And now I invite you, if you choose, to offer up the things that you are carrying that you would like to lift into this space of connection and prayer. We are hearing the voices of members of our congregation express why it is that our fellowship is important in their lives. And so here now, Jalen Haley and Daniel Johnson. Good afternoon. So Jalen and I are gonna tell you the reasons why we pledge. I'm gonna let him go first and tell you his personal reasons and now go into why I pledge. So the reason why I pledge was primarily um, dealing with the first time we got here to Montgomery. This was an opportunity for us to get into a faith community uh, that we felt we were very comfortable with here in Montgomery. Uh, it's turned into a sanctuary for us in so many different ways um, to come and exercise the faith that we um, choose to, to express. Uh, with a community uh, that is very loving, very open, and very understanding. Um, we appreciate everything that UUFM brings to the Montgomery community, and we uh, want to make sure that uh, for 
future um, couples and, and individuals and, and groups of people that they have this uh, place for them to come to as well. I, I pledge for a number of reasons. One of the reasons, when we first moved here to Montgomery, we, Jalen and I discussed that we wanted to be involved, like he said, in the community. And we do care about people in general. And to be connected to a community of people that are actually doing the work on the ground, UU does not pretend to be something that it's not. It does not pretend to have all the answers in life. And for me, that's a huge thing coming out of a, a contentious relationship with some organized religions in, past, in the past. Because I don't believe that any religion in itself has all concentration of knowledge. And UU doesn't pretend to be that place. What I love about it is how we have events that focus more on dealing with individuals and seeking out answers. Because... I like to seek truth and seek more knowledge and seek more justice in the world. And when we have second hours that focus on a lot of those things, I think it really enhances the best parts of us and make us make us better individuals. Therefore, we become a better community and then we can give a better community to the world. I love the members within the congregation. I love doing events with, the, with members within the congregation. And I think that it's a small way to make the world a better place. So... Those are the reasons why we pledge. Thank you. Thank you. Of course, during this difficult time, our congregation still needs financial support as much now, perhaps more now than ever. We still have the mortgage and salaries and the base utilities that we pay whether or not anything is turned on. In addition, we share half of the undesignated giving to an organization doing the work on the ground to which we are dedicated in principle. And for this quarter, the Social Action Committee has identified Faith in Action Alabama as our partner right now. Faith in Action Alabama is working to press the district attorney and the sheriff's departments to release or not incarcerate minor offenders so as to slow the spread of the virus that is inevitable and treacherous within the confined space of city and county jails as well as state prisons. This is work that is so important in this hour as we honor the inherent worth and dignity of every person and make every effort to speak up and speak out for those whose voices might otherwise not be heard. Circle round for freedom, circle round for peace, for all of in prison, circle for release, circle for the planet, circle for each soul, for the children of our children, keep the circle whole. Circle round for freedom, circle round for peace, for all of us imprisoned, circle for release, circle Keep the circle.
A few months ago, a member asked me if I could preach a sermon on a question, is God in cyberspace? I said, of course, let's talk about it. I need to know that I am approaching the question that you're actually asking that we're on the same topic. I love it when people suggest ideas for sermons. I need to know what you need to hear about. But life goes on. At the time, it was an academic exercise. It seemed like fun to me. But we never had that conversation. And now, here we are meeting in this way. And it becomes so much more urgent. Well, for me, it's a challenging question because of the whole God idea. You see, I am what is called a non-theist. Simply put, that translates as I don't believe in God, but that's not quite true. It's just that my understanding of what that word means in my own religious life and spiritual practice is different from the traditional meaning. I'm what they call in theology school a panentheist. Panentheist. Everything in God. All of it. All of us. All of life. All of matter, all of energy, all of time, all of imagination. Godness contains everything, and it is what everything is made of. So not so much a God who could actually, like, show up somewhere. Always, everywhere, if there is anything. So, still, I think I can work with that. Let's see. It is a yes or no question. Those who know me well understand how I feel about binary situations. So it's a yes or no question to which I have four distinct answers, all of which are entirely true. Yes, no, both yes and no, and neither yes nor no. So if I'm going to address the question, I feel like I need to offer you all of the answers that I think are true. I'm going to start with the easy one. Neither. Is God in cyberspace? Neither yes nor no, because the words themselves don't have any concrete meaning. It isn't actually a question. One might as well ask, is there a plug fit here? I don't know what that is. It isn't anything. It's just a sound. And even if the word God means something in particular to you. Don't get me wrong, I am in no way suggesting that there is no such thing. But if it doesn't mean the same thing to you as it does to me, then it really has no meaning in our conversation. It's not a valid question because if the question you're hearing is not the question that I'm asking. There's no communication going on. It can't have an answer, neither yes nor no. Well, 
or yes and no. Whatever we mean by God is profoundly individual to us. The meaning is within us. Understanding this is a model, a concept in human terms of something that lies beyond any possible human understanding. Our best concepts are merely metaphors and models for something that defies conception. Therefore, each of us can only answer for ourselves if and when God is present and in what way. So when the question is asked in a general way, then yes and no, depending on who and how. Both answers are equally and simultaneously true. The third option would be, no. Is God in cyberspace? No, because cyberspace isn't a location. There's no there there. This God, by whatever understanding, is located where people are. There's no people in imaginary space. In this virtual location, there's only words, images, electrons passing back and forth, bits of communication. It's no place for a person, let alone a deity. Now, at last, we come to my favorite. What my immediate answer was when I first heard the question, of course, yes. Is God in cyberspace? Yeah, I'll admit, I waver and waffle from time to time, but it's what I like to believe, and I'm clear about why. Cyberspace, however imaginary, is the locus of this connection. It's the locus of human connection during physical distancing. And for me, connection is where we find godness. That's what is known as relational theology, this notion that connection between living things, especially between people, is how God itself is manifest. In some of our literature, you will find the expression that we understand God as the power of love in action. It's a thing that happens between living things, love, especially humans. Connection. Cyberspace is a virtual realm designed and created precisely for the purpose of connection. Sure, it's also the cloud, storage and processing capacity used by people and organizations for files and all, all sorts of manipulation of files. It's a place where an individual user can access games, view pornography, read literature, hook up with dates, read menus, find places, but mostly, especially these days, it's about connecting. And in my own understanding, the best I know, that is exactly how and where God happens. Right here. Right here.
in the love that drives my relationship with you, even if we've never met. Love that makes society itself possible, that permeates our work for justice, that insists upon our welcome for all people, even when they make us uncomfortable. The love that persists when people disagree, even when we get frustrated with each other, even when we don't like each other, love that is possible because we recognize a oneness that unites all humanity, a continuity of one being, God, if you will, in and among all human life. It is that oneness. It is that power of love that convinces me we get through this calamity, that we emerge, that we grow and move through this ordeal, changed, stronger, wiser, more human, more connected for the experience better because we respond not by withdrawing and arming ourselves against one another, but by reaching out and connecting with one another to overcome fear and division and ignorance. We will come through. We will stay together in this hour and we will be together when this hour passes. Amen. Our service has ended. May our service continue always.